Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering borderline personality disorder. Now, borderline personality disorder, this does fall under the cluster B of the personality diagnoses. If you guys haven't watched the other videos, please be sure to watch the other videos on the different clusters so you can know which disorders fall under which cluster. Now, before we get started, please do not forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Help support my channel by sharing my content, share it with a classmate, share it with a nursing instructor, share it on your social media platform. You never know who is... Um, on your social media that's in a nursing program that's struggling and can use my help or my services. So please support my channel by um, sharing my content, or you can uh, go on my website and check out my audio lessons I have available for purchase, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And almost daily, guys, you can catch me on Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, covering a variety of nursing questions. Okay, guys, so let's get started. Let's look at what it says here. So borderline personality disorder, it's a part of that cluster B diagnosis. Borderline personality disorder is the most well-known and dramatic of the personality disorders. And once I'm done with this video, you will understand why this author said that it's known as one of the most dramatic disorders. Borderline personality disorders characterize, remember guys, when you're studying, let me make this bigger for you. When you're studying and you see that word, characterize or characteristic or hallmark or cornerstone that's important that's letting you know that whatever comes behind it once you see this that's what you should think be thinking of right so it's characterized by severe impairments in functioning so this disorder is so bad that that patient can't even function appropriately the patient has marked instability and their relationships are going to be uh, unstable. They're not going to be able to keep long-term relationships, romantic or otherwise. This patient's going to have um, emotional lability. So they're going to be very, very, very happy, then very, very, very sad, then very, very annoyed, then very, very impatient. They go from one end to another like that, okay? They have marked instability in emotional control or regulation, impulsivity. The minute something goes into their head, they do it. They don't even think about the consequences. Identity or self-image distortions, unstable mood, and unstable interpersonal relationships. This. Okay. Look at what this says. One of the primary features of borderline personality disorder is emotional lability. You know what your emotions are, happy, sad, anger, frustration, lability, up, down, all over the place, okay? Emotional lability, <coughs> excuse me, that is rapidly moving from one emotional extreme, extreme to another. Excuse me, guys, give me a second. You know I'm a mommy. My son's still in school, so... It doesn't end. All right, let's keep going. Another disruptive trait common in people with borderline personality disorder is impulsivity. Again, the minute an idea comes into their head, they don't even think about the consequences. If it comes into their head, they want that immediate gratification and they will do it. They're very impulsive. Impulsivity is manifested. No. There we go. It's manifested in acting quickly in response to emotions without considering the consequences. They don't even take the time to think about, you know, this might not be a bad idea. Let me think this through. The minute they get that emotion or they get that thought in their head, they do whatever it is that they want to do. Self-destructing behaviors are prominent in this disorder. And let me stop here for a second because um, I want to bring this to your attention. Self-destructing behaviors such as uh, sexual promiscuity or drug use, um, cutting self, self or a suicidal, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, suicidal 
gestures, which means they're not really suicidal where they really want to kill themselves, but they want the tension that they get from being suicidal. So what happens is a lot of patients with borderline personality disorder end up dying accidentally from suicidal gestures. So for example, let's say they're in the inpatient unit and they know the change of shift is at three o'clock. And so what they'll do is, you know, they'll may take a rope or something to hang themselves, but they've timed it. They know what time the nurse is going to come in. So the nurse will come see them hanging from a rope, save them. And then they get, they get that high from being cared for and being worried about. Right. But something could have happened on that shift where the nurse was delayed and the nurse didn't get to the patient in time and that patient actually dies, but they really were not truly trying to kill themselves. It was a, a suicidal um, gesture that they made, but something went wrong. So many patients with borderline personality disorder end up accidentally killing themselves from um, these gestures. So I just want to bring that out there. All right. So, <laughs> excuse me, self-destructive behaviors are prominent in this disorder ineffective and often harmful self-soothing habits such as cutting promiscuous sexual behavior and numbing with sub substances whether it be cocaine marijuana alcohol are common and may result in look at this key word guys unintentional death they weren't really trying to kill themselves okay my book is falling apart Let me move this up this way. Maybe that will work. Okay, much better. Borderline personality disorder is also characterized by feelings of antagonism. You say up, they have to say down. Manifested in hostility, anger, and irritability in relationships. So they cannot keep the peace. They can't help themselves. Physical violence towards intimate partners and non-intimate partners alike may occur. An unusual feature of this disorder is the use of splitting as a primary defense or a coping style. And so with that splitting, guys, you know how normally someone that you're in a relationship, romantic or not, it can be a friendship. You can see their good aspects, but you understand they're humans. They have bad aspects too. They have flaws. Well, with border, patients with borderline personality disorder, they're unable to see both the good and the bad. You're either all good or you're all bad. So when you're caring for this patient and they're getting their way with you, you're the best nurse on planet earth. You are the best nurse. Nobody else knows what they're doing. This place is chaos when you're not around. But as soon as you get to work, you get everything in order. But the minute you come against them by not giving them what they want, all of a sudden, you are the worst nurse in the world. You can't do anything right. Okay, that is splitting. Splitting refers to the inability to view both positive and negative aspects of others as part of a whole. The inability results in viewing someone as either a wonderful person or a horrible person. There's no middle ground. Let's look at the DSM-5 criteria for a patient to be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Okay, look at what it says. A pervasive pattern of, again, instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image effects, uh, excuse me, self-image, affect, and marked impulsivity beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts as indicated five. That's your number, guys, by five or more of the following. So the patient has to have five or more of what we're going to go over for them to be diagnosed as having borderline personality disorder. One, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. This type of personality, it would be hard for them to maintain a friendship because life happens. You can have a friend, but you know, you have kids, you have work, you can't be with them every single second of the day. You can't call and check on them every second, every second of the day. And people with borderline personality disorder, they don't understand that any attention that you don't give them, they take it as abandonment and they cannot handle it. And they tend to get aggressive about it. Okay. Two, a pattern of unstable and intense 
interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. And so you'll see patients with borderline personality disorders, they have best friends very quickly. You only met this person an hour ago, but they're your best friend. You want to do everything together with them. And then you're offended when they don't want to be with you every second of the day. Three, identity disturbances, markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. And that can go from them thinking they're the hottest thing on earth to them thinking that they're worthless. Four, impulsivity. How many times have we seen that word, right? To be impulsive. Impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. Look at these examples. Whenever you guys are studying, and you see in the textbook that they give you examples and parentheses with a whole bunch of commas. Don't you think that's going to be a beautiful select all that applies on your test? Yes, it is. Make sure you know them. Make sure you understand them. What are these examples? Spending. Them spending their entire inheritance or life savings. Life savings. Them spending like there's no tomorrow. Sex. Having sex indiscriminately and not using protection. Substance abuse. Cocaine, alcohol, reckless driving, binge eating. No, do not include suicidal or self-mutilating behaviors that's covering criterion five because um, that right there is a criteria by itself. Here goes criteria five, recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats or self-mutilating behavior. So them talking about, you know what, that's fine. You know, um, I'm going to get peace soon, or it's all going to end soon. Them threatening to harm themselves or them ingesting a whole bunch of pills right in front of the nurse, right? That's a suicidal gesture. Recurrent suicidal behaviors, gestures, or I just went over this. Number six, Effective instability due to marked reactivity of mood. Look at what they put in parentheses, guys. Intense episodic dysphoria. So they are on top of the world. Then they're irritable. Then they're anxious. Number seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. Despite all of these outside manifestations that you see, they're constantly feeling empty or unfulfilled. Eight, inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. And that's where that impulsiveness comes in. Frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurrent physical fights. The minute they don't get what they want, they turn hostile. Number nine, transient stress-related paranoid ideations or severe dissociative symptoms. So make sure you guys are well aware of this DSM-5 criteria. Let's take a look at assessment guidelines for borderline personality disorder. I'm not going to go over all of these guidelines, but I am going to go over number one. This is the what is seen the most as far as test questions in regards to this, but make sure you guys cover all the others. Look at number one, assess for suicidal or violent thoughts towards others. Always, even if you you think they're faking it, you always have to ask, are you having thoughts of harming yourself or anyone else? And if they say yes, the very next question that should come out of your mouth is, well, do you have a plan? And listen to see what they say, because what you're trying to find out is, do they have access to that plan? How realistic is that threat? If they say, yes, I have a plan. I, I plan on shooting myself with the gun dislocating in my father's house in the garage. Well, guess what? That's a pretty detailed plan versus, yes, I plan on jumping off of Mount Everest, but they're in South Florida, right? So that's very important. You're going to assess um, their thoughts for violence towards self and others. And if these are present, the patient will need immediate attention. Do not leave them alone. If positive, guess what? They're going to be on one-on-one -on -one observation. Even going to the bathroom, somebody's going to go with them. Um, signs and symptoms, nursing diagnoses, and outcomes for borderline personality disorder. I'm not going to go over all of this box, but I'm going to touch up on the most important signs and symptoms that you need to know regarding board borderline personality disorder. Take a look at this. Again, how many times have we seen this word, impulsivity? That is a hallmark classic cornerstone characteristic 
of borderline personality disorder. Abrading, biting, cuts on the body, hitting, ingestion of harmful substances, inhale, inhalation of harmful substances, insertion of object into the body orifices, picking at wounds, scratching on the body, self-inflicted burns. These are signs and symptoms. The patient having a history of self-mutilization or mutilation or suicide attempts. Again, being impulsive. Intense and unstable relationships. They can't keep any relationships, but for the short time that they do have the relationships, they're very, very intense. Dependency. Remember, they have a very strong need to be loved and wanted, and they're very afraid of abandonment. Excessive emotional responsiveness where, you know, anytime they're thwarted, even a little bit, they get very angry and they can get violent. Attention-seeking behaviors, difficulty in relationships, manipulation, destructive behavior towards others and self. Down here is a case study about a patient with borderline personality disorder. Again, some subjective data that you need to be um, aware of. Them having history of, look at this keyword, superficial suicide attempts. So there were suicide attempts, but they weren't true attempts, right? Them stating, I feel empty inside. Them requesting a new primary nurse because the current nurse hates her. Remember, you're the best nurse in the world until they don't get their way. Then all of a sudden, you are the worst nurse ever. You don't know what, they're, what you're doing. They need a new nurse. And let me stop right there because I got to say to you, patients with this disorder, you have to be careful because, you know, between the splitting and the manipulation, you can get angry at this patient and forget that this is a disorder that they have and that they can't help it. Okay. There's no cure for this disorder. We have treatments, but there's no cure. And so you have to be um, cognizant of that and continuously check yourself because you will get upset with your patient if you can't remember that this is a disease. This is a disorder, just like any other disease that the patient has. Um, when angry, them threatening to cut themselves, that's a form of manipulation, right? Let's look at some objective data, things that are measurable that we can see in the patient. Them cut, seeing cuts on the wrists, ankles, labia, them being calm on admission, because remember, they can run hot than cold. Finding them in bed with another male patient, right? Remember, they're very impulsive and um, sexual promiscuity is one of those uh, manifestations that we'll see them breaking the unit rules, trying to get away with it. There was one more thing. No, two more things. Let's look at these outcomes. I want to bring to your attention. Outcome. So for um, the objective data where we see the cuts on the wrist, the ankles, the labia, we want to make sure the patient will consistently demonstrate the use of effective coping strategies. So in, you know, if they're upset or they're anxious or they're frustrated, instead of cutting themselves or st sticking an object into their vagina or their anal area, right? Instead of doing that, say to the nurse, hey, I'm feeling angry. I want to talk about this. Or then, or maybe if they're good at drawing or they like to draw, pulling out a pad and drawing on that pad, but finding better ways to cope with the frustration, anxiety that they feel instead of becoming aggressive with others or themselves. Here's another great outcome. Patient will consistently demonstrate the use of, oh, that's the same thing. <laughs> Effective coping strategies. That is the name of the game. Mm, there was something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. What was it? Oh, here we are. So this is, it says dialogue with a patient with manipulative, aggressive, and impulsive traits. All of these we see in that patient with borderline personality disorder. I underlined the content that you tend to see the most on test questions. So we'll talk about that. You want to use open-ended statements, maintain a non-judgmental attitude. The reason you want open-ended uh, statements and questions, you want that patient to be able to express themselves and you don't want to be the one putting ideas in their head, right? Remember, you're going to use closed-ended statements or questions when it comes to 
suicide, when it comes to abuse, when it comes to uh, history or assessment for that patient, such as, you know, do you have any allergies, things like that. Here's another therapeutic tool. Redirect patient to present problem or situation because they'll try to manipulate you and they'll want to talk about everything under the sun. Okay, that's all great, but let's talk about what you just did right now. Let's talk about this behavior right now. Why? That helps decrease the manipulation. They can't get you off track. Um, make inter make interpretation of information, note increasing anxiety. That is very important for you guys to be able to, to recognize the cues of when the patient's anxiety is starting to increase and they may become volatile so you guys can protect yourself and the patient. So let me jump to page 461 very quickly because I want to go over those cues with you. Those cues have been seen on NQEX very often. Rigid posture. So patient had a relaxed posture, then something happened to upset them. All of a sudden, their posture is rigid. You better watch out. They may be ready to strike and hit you or themselves or somebody else. Hyperactivity. Pacing. Pacing is another famous one. You see that patient pacing, you better go address that. Why are they pacing? They may be ready to be violent towards someone. Let's see violating rights of others, such as them walking into the day room, everybody is watching television and they just walk up to the TV and turn it off and they dare anybody to come and turn it back on. They're looking for a fight. So um, these signs and symptoms, you guys should recognize them as escalations in behavior, okay? And you wanna keep your patients safe from harm. Let's keep going. Identify feelings and explore threat or anxiety. Help them to recognize when they're starting to feel anxious or frustrated so that they can start calming themselves down. They can start recognizing it. Set limits. Set limits on and expectations of patient's behavior. And that starts from day one. From admission, you have to explain to them what the rules are and what the consequences are if you break those rules. And most importantly, you have to follow through. Focus on the patient's responsibility and suggest alternative methods of coping with situation, such as going for a walk or drawing or listening to soft music. Whatever that patient's into that may calm them down. They need to recognize when they're starting to escalate and start to calm down. Show understanding and suggest other means of coping. You have to do all of this in a non-judgmental attitude. Otherwise, you're not going to get through to them. And that's not therapeutic communication. Identify results of impulsive behavior. Okay, let's talk about other times in the past that you've acted impulsive. Let's talk about what you did and let's talk about what the outcome was and help them see a pattern and that the outcome was never good. Every time they were impulsive, they ended up broke or getting a DUI or getting an STD or whatever it is that happened, but the outcome was never good. Help them recognize that being impulsive never works out for them so they can start actually wanting to learn what those strat uh, strategies for effective coping are and they can start using them. And I think that was it. Let me just double check, make sure I'm not missing anything. That was it, guys. That was it for the borderline personality disorder. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about this video for borderline personality disorder. Let me know if you'd like me to make more contact, contact, more content on psychiatric nursing, or if there's something else that you'd like to see me cover. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my ne website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you guys will catch me on the next video.